Okay, let's talk about green design here. Uh, green design is actually a pretty broad topic and we touch on it several times over the course of this class. Uh, it goes under several different names, uh, green design, ecological design, sustainability design, all that sort of thing. Kind of res uh, kind of uh, means the same thing, but let's focus on um, kind of the broader principles of green design and what it is and what it means to design something uh, with sustainability and the environment in mind. First, let's take a look at a few definitions here. Green design um, is designing objects, uh, physical objects, individual things, um, architecture, buildings, that sort of thing, uh, with the principles of economic, social, and ecological sustainability. Uh, renewable resources are as you probably know, resources that re, uh, replenish itself uh, within the passage of a reasonable amount of time. According to the U.S. government, the reasonable amount of time is, is within 20 years. So for, that would mean that bamboo, for example, is renewable because it grows faster than 20 years, whereas oak <coughs> takes uh, 30 to 50 years to become harvestable, so oak would not be a renewable resource even though it does grow. Non-renewable resources are, um, are, are something that cannot re uh, replenish themselves within a reasonable amount of time. Like, the, like I said before, an old growth oak tree can replenish itself, but it takes 100 years, so it is a non-renewable resource. Uh, when you're designing things, there are certain objectives that you need to consider. First off, uh, you need to make sure to increase your efficiency in the use of materials and energy. Uh, a lot of times, um, you need to balance uh, both energy consumption and material usage because when you you might try to design something to use fewer materials but you might find out that uh, down the road it ends up using more energy so it, it's a net loss. Um, minimize damage and pollution from the material and the processes that you use. Uh, reduce to a minimum any long-term harm caused by use of the product. Ensure that the planned life of the product is most appropriate in environmental terms and that the product functions efficiently for its full life. Um, if you have, if, for example, if you have like an HVAC unit, a, a furnace in a house uh, that gradually becomes less and less efficient, then it is uh, not a very green design because the older it gets, the worse it performs. And a lot of, a lot of times furnaces stay inside houses for 10, 15, or even 50, 60, 70 years. There are some pretty old furnaces out there that are still functioning. Um, you want to also take into full account the effects of end disposal of the product. A lot of times manufacturers kind of forget about this. Uh, disposal is a very important aspect of this as, uh, of green design as well. Um, you also want to ensure that the packaging and the instructions encourage the efficient and environmentally friendly use of the product. Um, the, the over over packaging of products is a is a common thing nowadays and um, it's it's really starting to kind of fall by the wayside because uh, material costs are going up so there's not only the environmental aspect but also a financial aspect uh, financial incentive for companies to reduce the amount of packaging that they use uh, also um, a green designer needs to analyze and minimize potential safety hazards uh, all of these uh, objectives were taken from the website listed below if you want to look into a little bit more there's the link right there um, Around the world, uh, governments are issuing take-back legislation, which is basically laws that require companies that produce things to uh, uh, buy back or offer to buy back their products for proper disposal. Um, there, there, there are a few in, in the U.S., but they're pretty big in, in uh, Europe and Asia. Uh, this way, the manufacturers who know what went into the product can properly recycle it um, and dispose of it. This is becoming a new trend these days, but it is pretty, um, pretty important. Um, this is a video designed for the dump. Uh, make sure to open up this uh, presentation and watch this video. It's about seven minutes long, but it gives you a pretty good idea of uh, kind of the issues facing design, specifically when it comes to electronics. Um, take back legislations like I, uh, like I mentioned in, in the U.S. We have Maine um, where there are manufacturers, car manufacturers have take back legislation 
uh, in place. Th they have to actually pay for the collection and recycling of the mercury switches from old cars. It's just one small component of what a car is. Um, there's a lot more um, materials that are in a car that are just as toxic as mercury, if not more so, um, that they're not being required to dispose of, but this is kind of a step in the right direction. On a larger scale in the United Kingdom, uh, the, in 2003, the government over there uh, issued um, a law that required all car manufacturers and importers of new car to uh, take back um, the vehicles completely and ensure that they are disposed of in an environmentally friendly fashion. Um, in Sweden, producers and importers uh, must take back old equipment, especially electronics, uh, when consumers buy new products. Uh, electronics recycling is getting more popular in the U.S., again, for both financial and environmental reasons as well. Uh, Norway, uh, same thing, similar law th to the one in Sweden where, they're required, where the manufacturers are required to purchase, um, or not purchase, but reacquire these products from the end users and then dispose of them properly. Uh, in Japan, uh, end users have to pay for fee, p pay fees for uh, recycling. So when you buy something, there's a kind of a, a fee that goes on with the product that you have to pay, and that covers the cost of recycling. Um, those fees are sent back to the companies that produce those, so they can properly, um, or they're required to properly dispose of the stu that's, uh, that stuff. So this way, the um, the cost of disposal and recycling is kind of rolled out to the consumer which a lot of uh, consumers might not like, but it makes it a little bit easier for the companies to implement. Um, for example, in the U.S., for like a, if, if in Japan, to recycle a washing machine would be the U.S. equivalent of $24. So that is a fee that's kind of um, attached to the purchase of that washing machine in the first place. Reason for because this is what happens if you don't do that. Ever all of this is a picture from a electronics dump uh, in Africa, and basically th there's a lot of um, ways that companies will quote unquote try to recycle things that's not really recycling. Um, they uh, w there's a law that um, forbids companies from uh, shif shipping uh, stuff overseas for um, disposal. A lot of times what they do to get around this law is they will say that they are shipping secondhand goods overseas and say they're not, it's not garbage, it's secondhand goods that they expect people to use, but really they don't. And what happens is uh, bulk purchasers will buy it by the pound, uh, remove all the expensive and valuable metals out of it and put piles of plastics and other garbage that they can't do anything with like this in dumps or burn it. Now, as far as uh, green issues are concerned, there's several different attitudes um, to these green issues. First, you got the eco-warriors, which are people who will actively demonstrate on um, environmental issues. You probably heard about these types of organizations that do the same thing. Uh, eco-champions are kind of more of an individual, but they exist within organizations uh, that might not necessarily be ecologically minded to begin with. So these are people who work for companies who really push these green issues uh, for that particular company. Eco fans are kind of like the individual level. These are people who follow this uh, this stuff and keep track of it, and they're they're interested in it and they promote it, but not necessarily on a organizational level. Then ecophobes are people who are kind of actively resent talks of environmental protection, um, and they disavow that sort of stuff and, and don't want to have anything to do with it uh, for whatever their own reasons are. After this video is done please go to this website, myfootprint.org, uh, and go through that and see if you can figure out what your own family's footprint is. It'll ask you a few series of questions like what kind of food do you eat, where do you live, what, what type of vehicle do you drive, and it'll kind of uh, give you an example of how, if everyone in the world lived like you, how many Earths would it take to sustain that, um, that lifestyle. Uh, so take a look at that and bring back the answer tomorrow and we'll talk about it. Remember gray writing, this means, uh, especially for the people who are in the HL design technology course, uh, this is language that you're going to want to pay attention to. Um, remember, 
there are resources and resources are limited uh, in the world. There are a limited amount of non-renewable resources. Renewable resources people can design with and work with a lot easier because they will grow back, they'll return. Um, but designers need to consider um, the use of these resources, not just by the production, but also by the use of the product over time. So if a product uh, might not cost much to manufacture and it might not use that much energy or materials to manufacture, but it uses a lot of um, energy while it's being used, then it's not uh, a very green design. So that's an energy aspect, but there are also um, a, a resources that you need to consider for the manufacturer and use as well, other than just energy. And international mindedness, uh, consider the impact of these multinational companies when they obtain resources in different regions or countries. Um, what issue does this have for the local population? The, when when um, countries are going overseas, uh, or when companies are going overseas to other countries uh, where there might be less laws protecting um, the local populations, what are these companies doing to ensure that they are not just kind of pulling all the resources out of a, out of a, uh, out of a community and then leaving the um, citizens there to deal with the mess that they made? Uh, and then theory of knowledge, uh, to what extent should potential damage to the environment limit our pursuit of knowledge? Um, I wouldn't say, I don't know if limit our pursuit of knowledge, but limit our application of the knowledge is probably a more um, accurate statement when linking this to theory of knowledge. Um, so remember to go back and watch that video. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more insight onto um, green design and the take back legislation that is being implemented around the world. <laughs>